Russia's military command relies on taking from stocks and upgrading older models of armored fighting vehicles. That's according to Andriy Yusov, a spokesman for the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine's defense ministry, who spoke on the air of the national telethon. As far as defense industrial output production is concerned, objectively the enemy is trying to mobilize as much as possible for such production to sustain the invasion forces. In some areas they have certain achievements and in some they don't. And if we are talking about the production of modern equipment in particular, armored vehicles, here the bid remains on demothballing and modernizing older models, he noted. As for missile production, a certain level of output is maintained, which is a problem for Ukraine thanks to sanctions evasion, including smuggling and other shady schemes, the official noted. As for the situation of the economy and defense production in Russia, sanctions are working, and the sanctions can be different, economic ones introduced by our partners and those in the form of blasts, Yusuf added, hinting at Ukraine's long-range strikes inside Russia. When asked where Russia hides what's left of its Black Sea naval fleet, the spokesman said it was primarily Novorossiysk. They are trying to strengthen the base as much as possible, but not only that. They are regularly engaged in moving and redeploying, noted the representative of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine's defense ministry. Answering the question of whether it took a long time for defense intelligence to identify Russian servicemen responsible for Iskander ballistic strikes targeting Kharkiv and Sumy regions, Yusuf noted that these are always lengthy operations when it comes to identification. This is serious work of intelligence operatives, analysts, etc. All data are extremely important. The enemy must understand that evil will not remain unpunished and anonymous, he said. Russia's largest known military equipment storage facility has been stripped of nearly half of the Soviet-era tanks and armored vehicles that were stored on its grounds before Moscow launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Recently, Russian armed forces deployed a new batch of T-54 tanks from military storage, which were spotted at the Uzanova station on the Pavelecki direction of the Moscow Railway. This deployment reflects Russia's increasing use of older military hardware to continue its conflict in Ukraine, where it has suffered substantial tank losses totaling 2,891 units as of July the 22nd, 2024. These losses have included various modern tank models, leading to the use of T-54 tanks originally developed in 1954. In Ukraine, the T-54 and T-55 tanks have been used in unconventional ways. Rather than serving as traditional battle tanks, the T-55s have primarily been used as 100mm self-propelled guns, providing indirect fire support from concealed positions akin to artillery. Nevertheless, these tanks are also being employed to assault Ukrainian positions functioning as both tanks and troop transports in a manner similar to tactics used during the Second World War. At least 123 people have been killed in massive landslides triggered by heavy rains in the southern Indian state of Kerala. Dozens of others are still feared to be trapped following the landslides. The landslides hit the Vainad district on early Tuesday with rescue teams dispatched in the area. According to Chief Minister Pinari Vijayan, the landslide has wiped out an entire area. The landslides have hit several areas in the district including Mandakai, Adamala, Koromala and Kunhom. Over 200 army personnel have also been deployed to help security forces in search and rescue efforts, according to official reports. Over 123 injured victims have been hospitalized and more than 3,000 people have been rescued and moved to 45 relief camps. The number of casualties are expected to be increased. Vainad, a hilly district which is part of the Western Ghats mountain range, is prone to landslides during the monsoon season.